welcome back. Um, today we're going to be working on, and actually I'm going to go over um, some species work with uh, bonsai. And what I have right here for you guys to look at today is a Lugo pine. This tree I've had for about two years. Been training it ever since. Um, wasn't a larger landscape pot for a while. I'm um, sorry about the background noise. There's a lot of birds out today. And, uh, somebody's mowing their lawn. <laughs> That's all right, though. At least they take care of their lawn. Um, had him for about two years. Um, been training him ever since. I kind of like the shape of the tree when I got it. Now, normally when you look for pine trees, I look for landscape trees or trees that are in like landscape nurseries because there you can kind of go through and you know look at the trunks. And a lot of them actually do lend themselves um, to it. This one actually had a longer branch that came out that way. I didn't know whether I was going to utilize that or not, so I just cut it off. Um, the tree has been just relaxing in this pot ever since I repotted them earlier this year just to change the, the medium. Uh, I haven't really done a lot of wiring work. This is the first year I've wired it. Uh, I wired some of these branches out to shape and I removed the branch that was here and I left the stump there and utilized it as gin or shari. Um, it's a little bit of dead wood on it. I probably still have to work on it, but the problem is you can't really work on you can't work on them when they're actually in their growth mode because what happens is they bleed, like, you know, the sap comes pouring out of the tree. So you don't want to really do any more damage than you really have to. So it's always better to do that to these things in like the fall when it starts to chill off or the very early spring before they wake up. I thought I had him early enough in the spring that this wouldn't have happened because he's bleed, like he's dripping sap from that little wound a lot. But, you know what, I'm going to let it go and see what happens. Nothing really goes after pine tree sap, so I'm not worried about attracting pests or insects. So, one thing I want to talk to you about is with pines like the Mugo, these are outdoor trees. You do not put them in the house. They are not growing in the house like the other trees that I have shown you, the indoor species that I did a while ago. This tree you want to basically keep outside all the time. Um, they like full sun. In the summertime, you can put a shade cloth over them a little bit, and that way they only maybe get morning sun, and then you shade them from the hot afternoon sun. The reason being is that they're in a shallow tray, and they don't have a lot of uh, they don't have a large uh, access to readily available water. So you always want to conserve the water that you have in the pot, and the medium is always well drained, so you're not going to hold on to a lot of water. The other thing you also got to watch out for these guys is um, bagworms. They can get these little worms that collect like uh, dead needles and they start hanging from the tree. It makes them look awful. I don't know what else they do. I don't know of too many pests that go after them except for the bagworms around here. But other than that, um, they're pretty much pest free. You can wire them at pretty much any time. Just be aware that they are a soft wood like all pine is and then they will scar easy. So you have to kind of watch. It's better to scar them in the winter time or wire them toward the fall and let them sit all winter like that, and then you can just take it off in the spring. When you do it in winter time, <clears throat> pardon me, you want to make sure you wrap the branches with uh, raffia or some kind of a covering because when the wire gets cold in the winter, it's not really good to have ice cold metal wire against the bark of the tree, especially when it's not active. Um, they're easily pruned. They can <clears throat> pine trees can come into a large variety of shapes. Cascade, semi-cascade, tall, upright, windswept, you name it. This one's going to be like kind of a, I guess, a slanted tree or, you know, I guess slanted, I would call it. I'm still trying to figure it out, though. <clears throat> but I kind of, I really like this tree. I found that this one's very easy to care for. And when you do prune it, you always want to prune off the older last year's or year before, like maybe two or three year old needles in the back and let the new ones the shoots come out. They will candle, which are these things here. This is a candle. This is the new bud coming out. Um, you can direct their growth by pinching. You pinch the growth that comes out of the center and direct the growth that comes out of the sides, and you'll get different candles, which are the new tips of the new branches. Um, fertilize them once a month. Other than that, they want free draining soil, so your soil will be less organic. You will have more inorganic media in it, so it will be turfus or hayite. Depending on what you got readily available, uh, it could be granite chips, perlite, and then you want to use just a slight amount of composted fir bark or some kind of a compost that's clean. And other than that, they're pretty much 
they're pretty much really just hardy trees to take care of. And uh, a lot of people are intimidated by them, but they're not that difficult. And they look great when you actually got broken branches on them. But the, typically when you want to find one of these, you really want to look in places like somebody throws it on the side of the road, somebody a uh, shopping center took out a juniper that got hit in the wintertime and they tossed it to the curb. If it's got imperfections, it's in the art of doing this that you bring forth those imperfections and make them beautiful. It's taking something that should be ugly and making it beautiful and actually accentuating its imperfections to make it beautiful. That is the art of bonsai. So, I, mean, I think I'm getting like allergies real bad, so I'm starting to get stuffy too, and my throat's starting to feel a little weird. But that is how you would go about doing that. Um, eventually, I'll do a little over repotting video. I see that Blue Jay doesn't like when I'm talking. <laughs> um, I'll do a repotting video. Uh, other than that, the only thing that really bothers these trees in my area is squirrels. I keep putting moss on the pot to make it look nice. They tear the moss off looking for something in there. I don't know. It gets to be frustrating. Alright guys, well, you have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this video.